Welcome back to Changing with the Times, you guys. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about all things related to the fifth beatitude. So, I hope you enjoy, and if you have any questions about last or to my last video that came out, I will be discussing a little bit about that too in the beginning. So, I hope you guys enjoy the video. It's my lucky day. In my last video, we had on, or I had on, two very special guests, and they talked about, we talked about the fourth beatitude and everything around or surrounding the fourth beatitude, and then we also discussed a little project that my, these two special guests were working on. So, again, if you want to donate or help out in any way with that, you can, you can contact them or, like, reach out to the, um, I think it's called the brand, the brand, the, uh, organization is called branches so if you want to go google them or do whatever just go go ahead and do that but in today's video we're going to be discussing all things about the fifth beatitude i'm going to discuss what it is what does it mean who it is and ways we can live it out okay so what is the fifth beatitude well fifth beatitude is blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy and what does it mean exactly well it means, happy are the people who are kind and forgiving to other people, for they will be shown kindness and forgiveness too. So obviously that's pretty self-explanatory. And people who are happy and go like go lucky and just embrace life completely are the ones that get the most out of life, we'll say. So that's that. The next part of this little what does it mean statement is this can be very easily explained with the golden rule, or in other words, the Bible verse Matthew 7, 12. This, this specific beatitude that Jesus is teaching says that the people that don't punish other people will not be punished for what they deserve in return. We are all sinful and we all do bad things, but Jesus is re reiterating what is repeated in multiple places in his teachings. And that to, that is to love one another as you want to be loved. So that end part, the golden rule, golden beatitude, or golden commandment. I mean, what I I remember learning about that all throughout Catholic grade school and then Catholic high school. And that's to say that I didn't go to Catholic grade school for all K through twelve. I think I only went K through five or part of five. But like I remember learning about that, that that the importance of that golden rule and that golden tenth uh, golden commandment, and how we if we want to be like we have to treat others as you would want to be treated, and that the importance of it and having like sh being able to share. And I know how silly that may seem now because I'm 24, but like when you're a little kid, you don't like. I remember not picking up on sharing right away and like fighting with my brother all the time or fighting with my sister when she was little but like I don't know at some point it just kind of clicked that like sharing is caring and like all that the importance of that the golden rule treat other or love other love one another as you would want to be loved that there is so much importance with that and Especially right now, like in the since we're in the middle of a pandemic, or not the middle. Hopefully, we're nearing the end of it at this point. But I won't jinx anything. But the importance of just treating others and loving others as you would want to be treated and loved is important. And going out and saying hello or holding the door for someone, something as simple as that, like going to Wawa or the Acme or whatever and just holding the door open for another person is very helpful and that would probably make I, there's a word for this but like if you did that for someone that someone would probably go out and do that for someone else and I like I said I don't remember the term for it but there is a term I remember learning about it and it's just like it it makes you feel good inside when you do things to help others and make others feel loved so there's that part now that I just rambled for a while. Um, who is the fifth beatitude? Mercy is an active virtue that Christians can show to each other because we have been given mercy ourselves. Since God has forgiven our offenses, we should forgive others and show them mercy. Again, 
This this part's a little bit different than the first part, but it kind of goes along the same lines of forgiveness and being able to show other people mercy and things like that. So when we go to confession and we're lift and we tell the priest all of our sins and all the things we've been doing that have kind of been stressing us out and putting this extra weight on us. When we are able to feel that weight lifted off our shoulder once God and the priest relieve us from our sins, that there is something to be said about having that weight lifted off our shoulder and like being like free almost. And so when you, you don't have to feel like you're struggling as much anymore and you kind of have that freedom and you are kind of have this weight lifted off your shoulder for forever. So I know for me, when I am forgiven for doing something, so off the top of my head, the only thing I can really think of is, I mean, I haven't done this in a while, but like when, um, I think I was a, it was my final year of college. No, it was the year before I was finishing college. So probably like my fourth or fifth semester of college at community college. I like was really struggling with school and I was taking doing an internship at the time. The internship was really getting to my head. I was dealing with a different, um, just different from what like I was dealing with people with disabilities, but they were different disabilities than what I have personally. And I was letting helping these people get to my head and it was just a bad time in my life and I'm like I fit I think I passed one class that semester and I've been taking like four or five actually I don't even know that I passed that class I think I got like a C and that was me passing so but my point was that like by the end of the semester when like my parents kept asking me if my grades had come out and how I did and that sort of thing I basically like had to it took a while, but I had to be like, listen, like I didn't pass and I failed all of them. And it just, it was a hot mess of a couple months. And honestly, I was not in a good place <laughs> at all. And honestly, like I was just not good mentally and having that, like not necessarily freedom, but not freedom, forgiveness. After after I was done working one day, I went to meet him at church, and we were, got to talking, and, like, he was, like, um, I did confession with him, and honestly, it cracked me up, because, like, we did it on the church steps, which is kind of funny, because, like, there's the parking lots behind the church steps, and, like, there were kids riding their bikes, and, like, things like that, and it's just, I, here I am, like, laying out my, all the things I've done wrong to this priest and there's kids biking around and it's just it's cracking me up but like basically I afterwards I just felt this great like weight lifted off my shoulder almost and like talking to this priest helped me drastically and like helped me kind of move on from the mistakes that I had made like a couple weeks or a couple months I don't remember exactly what, how long after I had done or lied to my parents and made all these mistakes how long after that that I met with this priest but having that like free freedom almost and that um weight lifted was such a great relief and like made me feel so good inside and it still took a while after that but like eventually I got back to like a point where like I had faith that like I could finish off the year and I ended up changing my major major and I ended up ended up graduating like within the following year so I mean, it definitely like helped meeting with that priest and just having that relief and that tension lifted off. So there's my little story for today. But um, yeah, so moving on to ways we can live out the fifth beatitude. Anytime someone truly forgives another, mercy is shown. So again, if you're in school or you're struggling and you don't know how to say anything to your parents or even if it's the other way around too and you're a parent and your kid is struggling and you don't know how to help them just be there for them that's the best thing you can do and help them to know that you're always present and you're always there for help and support but don't be like don't be overbearing in that you are constantly like hovering over them almost because that I can take safe with full certainty is not helpful <laughs> um 
But yes, that is that one. And even if you are a college student or you're a student in general, like high school, because I definitely had my fair share of struggles in high school too. I just, I don't, I've had a lot go on in my life and that's okay, but I've definitely never been the best at school. So um, high school, I had surgery freshman year, like I've said, I think on here before, I had got diagnosed with a different disease sophomore year and things have just been like really chaotic in my life and now here I am in a cast again so bright orange yay well not super bright it reminds me I keep saying it reminds me of an orange cream school <laughs> if anyone knows goes to comes to like the Jersey Shore and knows about fuzzy wuzzy you know how great an orange cream school is but it's okay we don't have to talk about that right now second example a child forgives someone who hurt him or her at school so if you're a child watching this and you are you have this friend that won't share and you are struggling and you want to play with this friend but you don't know how to you should say to him say to them like listen i want to play and i want to be able to help you or like not help you i want to be able to play with this toy with you can we maybe share and then you can like play together and then you can be like listen i forgive you for stealing this toy or, toy or whatever so there's that one moving on to the last and or the third and final um uh example of ways we can live it out a life is spared at the last minute by a merciful leader so what does that one mean because that's a pretty loaded um statement but basically like say you're in the hospital and you're struggling you can or your, one of your family members calls a priest to come do anointing of the sick or something like that, which by the way, anointing of the sick doesn't mean that you have to be dying to have it. I've had it, I think, I think I can count two or three times that I've had anointing of the sick. Like it's very, you just feel like you're connected more with God when you have this. And I honest, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I had it right before I had my surgery that I just had that I have a cast on my arm for. I had it literally like four or five days before I had the surgery. So, I mean, I would hope to God that it ha like helps and like the fact that I'm praying or was praying more and just am have been praying more and like doing the rosary and things like that. I would hope that that would help. But let's, again, off topic, but let's switch back to the um, last example. Um, a priest comes in and helps a person feel freed from their sins and when it says spared that can I feel like that can mean that they're spared spiritually or they're spared physically or mentally or whatever they're just spared in general like they feel that weight lifted off their shoulder and again circling back to that freedom you it is such a great feeling to have not feel that not burden but like the only word I can keep thinking of is weight like you feel this weight lifted off your shoulder so that's my last example, guys, and thank you for tuning in today, and I will talk to you guys soon. Mwah. Bye, guys. It's my lucky day.